China's leader Xi Jinping met for the last time with U.S. President Joe Biden but was already looking ahead to President-elect Donald Trump and his America First policies, saying Beijing is ready to work with a new administration. The two leaders gathered Saturday on the sidelines of the annual Asia-Pacific Economic Cooperation Summit. Biden was expected to urge Xi to dissuade North Korea from further deepening its support for Russia's war on Ukraine. Without mentioning Trump's name, she appeared to signal his concern that the incoming president's protectionist rhetoric on the campaign trail could send the U.S.-China relationship into another valley. China is ready to work with a new U.S. administration to maintain communication, expand cooperation and manage differences so as to strive for a steady transition of the China-U.S. relationship for the benefit of the two peoples, she said through an interpreter. In a major flourishing SciTech revolution, neither decoupling nor supply chain disruption is a solution, she said. Only mutual, beneficial cooperation can lead to common development. Small yard, high fence is not what a major country should pursue. There's much uncertainty about what lies ahead in the US-China relationship under Trump, who campaigned promising to levy 60% tariffs on Chinese imports. Biden, who is winding down more than 50 years of public service, talked in broader brushstrokes about where the relationship between the two countries has gone. For a decade, you and I have spent many hours together, both here and in China and in between. And, uh, you know, we, I think we spent uh, a long time <laughs> dealing with these issues. Can you... Put on your earpiece, we have simultaneous interpreting. Learn to speak Chinese. <laughs> Wish I did. Okay, let me begin first. It's a great pleasure to see you again, President Biden. We haven't always agreed, but our conversations have always been candid and always been frank. We have never kidded one another. We've been level with one another. I think that's vital. These conversations prevent miscalculations, and they ensure the competition between our two countries will not veer into conflict. Be competition, not conflict. That's our responsibility to our people, and as you indicated, to the people around the world. We are the most important alliance or most important relationship in the entire world. How we get along together is going to impact the rest of the world. The most important bilateral relationship is China. Conservative lawmakers in the Polish parliament exulted at Donald Trump's victory, standing and applauding while they chanted his name. The prospect of a second Trump term has excited people on the populist right across Central Europe who share his anti immigrant views and contempt for international organizations. But many others in a region near the war in Ukraine are afraid. They worry Trump could abandon Ukraine and force Kyiv into a deal that ends up emboldening Russia further, or unwind the US military presence in Europe. The change in Washington means Europe will have to invest more in its security and defense rather than relying on the American protective shield as it has done for decades, argues Michael Baranowski, managing director of Warsaw-based GMF East, part of the German Marshall Fund think tank. We Europeans Poles and French and Brits and preferably Germany as well need to step up, Baranowski said. Only by stepping up do we have a chance to keep the worst case scenarios from happening. Both a bad deal in Ukraine and perhaps a lowering of US engagement in Europe. Poland, the Baltic states and other nations across Central and Eastern Europe were under Moscow's control during the Cold War. When that era ended in 1989, it freed them to turn to the West. They never want to return to being satellites of Moscow. NATO members now, they worry that Trump in his second term could end a decades-long commitment to securing the peace in Europe. Just this week, a missile defense base in northern Poland was inaugurated, the fruit of years of planning by Republican and Democratic administrations. Polish officials expressed hopes that it was a sign that a bipartisan U.S. commitment to the region would endure. The whole world will see clearly that this is not Russia's sphere of interest anymore, Polish President Andrzej Duda declared. Trump has a long history of denigrating NATO, 
and former administration officials say he repeatedly threatened to withdraw the U.S. from the alliance. His allies have described that as bluster or tough negotiating tactics that have pushed other European allies to take more responsibility, and argue that Trump didn't abandon NATO. The change in Washington has in just a few days changed the dynamic of Poland's presidential campaign before an election next spring. Foreign Minister Radek Sikorski, a former defense minister with ties in Washington, entered the running to be the candidate for centrist Prime Minister Donald Tusk's party, challenging the longtime favorite, Warsaw Mayor Rafał Trzaskowski. Sikorski argues that his experience makes him the better choice for the times. His opponents argue that the anti-Trump views of his wife, the American writer and Applebaum, could create complications with Trump's upcoming administration. The region is now holding its collective breath to see what a second Trump presidency will bring. Iran's paramilitary Revolutionary Guard has put its missiles and drones on public display amid ongoing tensions with Israel. Some of the ballistic missiles showcased are capable of reaching Israel and U.S. bases in the region. The exhibition includes Iranian-made drones and radars as well. Iran is a close ally of Hamas and Hezbollah. ما انتظار داریم که بعد صادق سه یک اتفاقی را رقم بزنه و شاهدش باشیم که بر این تعجب های صادق یک و دو ما بی افزاید بگونه که دشمن دیگه حواسش جمع کنه بگه حریف این ایرانی ها اینا نمیشه من خودم احساس غروب کردم از اینکه تونستیم اینقدر قدرت دفاعی رو ببریم بالا که تو مخیله این تجاوزگرا اون فکر پیش نیاد که بتونن به حمله کنن اینجا اگر پاسخ طرف داده نشود طرف جریتر خواهد شد پس ما از مسئولی میخوایم که به قدرت و همچنین با توکل بر خدا به سختترین شکل و محکمترین شکل پاسخ به کسانی که به خاک ایران تعرض کردن من جمله اسرائیل غاسه با انجام بدن و از این موضوع موضوع خودشون به هیچ عنوان کوتاه نگه